Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial number 15 of Easy Excel. Today I will be covering some more data validation options. Last time I showed you data validation and how to create drop down lists. Today I will focus just on the other forms of data validation. Uh, I'll focus mostly on whole number as the rest of them are self-explanatory. If you know how to do one, you know how to do them all. I've mentioned that a few other times. Uh, there are several options in data validation that you can change, that you can alter, you can customize to your liking and I'll show you how to do that right now in a few minutes. Uh, the first thing you'll need to know are the data validation rules. These are comparison operators that most other programming languages use which is between not between equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. I provided some examples. This is not exactly how they're written in Excel. Uh, for example, the exclamation equal to is not equal to in most other programming languages. Uh, and in other languages, uh, equal to comparison would be two equal signs or even sometimes three equal signs, depending on which language you're working on. Uh, these are just examples, a visual, a visual of how each of these data validation rules look. I already set up some data validation here. Uh, I'll focus on whole number, as I said. This is data validated. As you can see, one of the features that you can change and customize is a little uh, information box here, which says for valid data, enter number greater than zero only. You can change that to your luck, or you can leave that as default, which is blank. If I do minus five, it won't it won't take it because I put this custom error message here, custom pop up message, help message rather, uh, and then you get a pop up in valid data, enter number greater than zero. This is also a custom setting in data validation which I will show you how to do right now. I'll go to the num uh, the cell right below, to A3, and I will do data validation for a whole number again. So to do data validation, you go to the data tab on top, and you have under the data tools, you have data validation. It's a double button. If you click on the top, data validation automatically comes up. If you click on the bottom part, it's a drop down list that says circle validation, circle invalid data, and clear validation circles. I'll show you how to do that as well. So let's do data validation. We want to do whole number. Uh, all these are the same. Uh, decimal, list, date, time, text length. And there's something called custom, which I will cover in another tutorial. So let's do whole number. By default, it will always come up to between because that's the first option. But you have all these other comparison operators as well. We will do between for now. Let's say minimum I want is to be negative 10. And the maximum should be 10. Right? Uh, uses our example. So if you enter a negative 11, it'll give you an error. If you enter an 11, it'll give you an error. It has to be between negative 10 and 10. Next tab here, you have input message. This is where you get that little help pop up, the yellow pop up tool. And it says, when a cell is selected, show the input message. You can do, you know, a test message. You know, enter number between negative 10 and 10 only. You can, of course, customize this to any way you like. If you check this box off, it'll gray out. It won't show. Next one is the error message. The error alert. Show error alert after invalidate is entered. You can turn that off. That means when something, when someone puts in invalid data, it won't do anything, which is, in my opinion, not data validation. It should error. It should let the user know that they're doing something wrong. There are three types of styles. There are stop, warning, and information. Stop means it won't allow you to enter that message until you fix it. Warning tells you, oh, you've entered uh, the wrong, wrong data. Do you want to correct it or do you want to keep going? If you say, you know, okay, keep going, it'll keep that wrong data. And there's information, which is, it'll tell you, oh, you've entered wrong data. Press OK to continue. It'll keep the wrong data, but it will be wrong. For this, let's do a warning. You know, warning. You've entered wrong data or invalid data, and press OK. So automatically, you get this little pop-up as soon as you go into the cell. It says, you know, test message enter number between negative 10 and 10 because that's what I did. If I do a negative 15, it'll throw out a warning message, which says, "Warning, you've entered wrong data." You have two options: continue, yes or no. If you press no, you have to re-enter. But if you press yes, Look, it, it lets you enter it even though it's not valid. Right? Let's do one more. This time, we will do 
the same. Uh, input message I'll leave, and this time we'll do information, right? Just some info you entered invalid data. Nothing I can do to stop you because this information pop up will not stop you. So <clears throat> if I do negative 20 again, it'll say just some info. You've entered invalidated. Nothing I can do to stop you. If you press OK, there you go. It lets you do that anyway. Negative 25. If you press cancel, it lets you, it goes back to what it was before. So there you go. This the just the three different types of error alerts, which is pretty neat if you ask me. Uh, you can control it. You have full control. You can customize this to any way you like, as long as you're familiar with the validation rules. This is nothing you have to memorize. You just have to know where to get to the data validation option right here in the data tab. And you can do the same for all of these. These are all self-explanatory. Uh, text length is controls how much, how many characters a uh, cell can have. Here I put, you know, a five-digit code only. Then I put a five. It gives you a warning. You know, continue, yes, but it lets you input that anyway. I made that wrong on purpose uh, because now I want to show you under the data validation option where it says circle invalid data. If you click on circle invalid data, it goes to all of your, all of the data validation options you have set in your spreadsheet and it circles data that is invalid. This data is invalid too because if you look at the options I put, I said it has to be greater than January 1st, 2015, but I put 1900 there. Okay? And that was done on purpose. There you go. So now, even though this is this is wrong, these are uh, only for messages that have a warning or information uh, message, not like this one has a style of information. The error alert is information. It's not error. It's, it's not stop. Stop means stop. Uh, if I try to do that here, you know, it obviously mm. won't let me, so that'll never get circled. This is a good way to go through your spreadsheet and see the wrong data. Uh, you can clear, you know, invalid circles, make these quick circles, and you fix it, you know, the validation circle goes away. Uh, it's a cool little tool. Uh, well, anyway, that's all there is to the data validation options. If you have any questions about any of these, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net and remember to subscribe.